Alicats and you viewers. So today I'm covering all the geeky pickups I picked up in the month of August. And yes, this is my new office. If the lighting looks weird, I'm sorry. I'm figuring this stuff out. But I really wanted to film in here. But if you don't know what geeky pickups are, that's literally where I pick up everything geeky related and show it to you guys. So let's just get started. First up, I have four candles from Nerdy Nifties. I fell in love with this company after my friend Adrian, Mr. Coconut, sent me a candle, so I had to get four more, and they smell so good. So first I had to pick up a Sassanac to go with the Jamie Fraser candle. Obviously this is Outlander. It smells so good. The next is Gardens of the Shire from The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. It's very flowery smelling. Then I got two Game of Thrones candles. First up is Mother of Dragons. This is a very smoky smelling candle. And secondly, I got I Drink and I Know Things and it smells like Merlot. It smells fantastic. And the company packages the candles beautifully. They're wrapped beautifully. They threw in a box of nerds for me. So I really love this company and I'll leave a link down below. I'm not being paid or anything. I just really like the company. So now I have a couple CDs I purchased this month. First up is Rainbow by Kesha. I actually really adored this. This is my favorite CD of her so far. I love how raw and honest her music is and I just freaking adored this CD. I also picked up After Laughter by Paramore. Again, I really resonated with this CD because of the themes that are explored in the songs. I've always been a Paramore fan and I just love this CD as well. I also picked up a few movies, first of which is the double pack of Rise of the Planet of the Apes and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I've seen Rise and really enjoyed it. I haven't watched Dawn yet, but I really want to because I've heard it's so much better than the first one, which I thought was really good. But I'm really excited to have both of these films. I also picked up Alien Covenant because I actually freaking enjoyed this movie when I watched it and I didn't really understand all the complaints about it. It's not the best Alien movie ever, but it's better than 3 and 4. And I actually liked better than Prometheus, and I like Michael Fassbender, so yeah, I like Alien Covenant, unpopular opinion. And I also picked up Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 because I love this movie in theaters, I love the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise, and I just love Marvel in general, so had to support it like they need my money, but who cares. And all the rest of these movies were from bargain bins, they were no more than $5 a piece. But the first one up is the 2013 Godzilla? 2014 Godzilla? I think it's 2013, but uh, I have mixed feelings about it. It's okay. I wanted to watch this after watching Kong Skull Island. It's okay. Not as good as Kong Skull Island, but it's decent. Then I picked up Inception. I've never seen this movie. Still haven't seen it as of the day of filming, but I'm going to. Picked up 127 hours because I really enjoy this movie and I didn't pass out during the one certain part everyone passes out or pukes at and I really wanted to see it again, so I got it. Then I picked up The Purge. This is not a fantastic movie, but it's fun and I really enjoy Ethan Hawke and Lena Headey. And I just wanted to revisit it, so I got The Purge because it's fun. Then I picked up District 9. I actually hated this movie when I first saw it in theaters, but I was too young at the time. I watched it again and freaking adored it on the second viewing. This is a phenomenal science fiction film. If you haven't seen it, most people have. And the last movie I picked up was Drive. Again, the first time I tried watching this movie, hated it. Second time I watched it, I loved it. I love Nicholas Winding Refn's directorial style. Ryan Gosling, Brian Cranston, Oscar Isaac, and Carey Mulligan were all fantastic in this movie. And I just love the aesthetic, the soundtrack, everything. I actually got a couple of games this month as well. A friend actually gifted me Sonic Mania. I've actually never played a Sonic game. Shame, shame, shame. I'm really excited to play this, so thank you, friend, for giving me Sonic Mania. And I also purchased What Remains of Edith Finch, which I freaking adored that game, and Hellblade Sinua's Sacrifice. I have a review for that game, so if you haven't watched that review, check it out. I'll link it up here and in the description box down below. And now we're moving on to all the books I bought, because I always say I'm not going to buy any books this month, and guess who buys books every freaking month? Me. But the first couple of items are actually just bookish related, and they are bookmarks from Nerdy Girl Designs. I freaking love this company. Again, not being paid or anything, just love the company. But first off, she sent me this cute little bookmark. It's like Princess Leia with pink hair and it's adorable. But what I mainly purchased, she threw that in as an extra, was first off, this set of magnetic bookmarks. It's Jamie and Claire from Outlander. Had to get it when I saw that she had these. And then also a bookmark that says, for where all love is, the speaking is unnecessary. Diana Gabaldon, of course, is freaking Outlander again. Jamie and Claire are on it. It's beautiful. I love it. 
Now let's move on to the actual books, and there's quite a few. Not as many as there have been in past months, but there's a lot. I'm not lying, there's a lot. First up, I purchased this copy of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Fun fact, I've never actually read all the Harry Potter novels. I stopped at the fourth one when I was younger, never picked them back up. I saw this when I went shopping with my best friend today, and we both bought books, and we both wrote in each other's books. And I actually haven't read what he has written yet, so I'm going to do that really quickly. That was really sweet. I'm not going to read it out loud because I think he would prefer me not to, but I just freaking love that my best friend wrote in this book and that I'm getting to relive the Harry Potter experience. And it's a gorgeous edition. It's so pretty. Ah! So this is holding a very special place in my heart because my friend wrote in this and it's a very sweet message and I just freaking love this. Next up, I picked up Child 44. I know the movie is terrible, but I've heard the book is phenomenal. It was only $3, so I couldn't say no, especially after hearing how great the book was. I also picked up Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ichiguro. I actually remember watching the movie and loving it, but I've heard the book is way better, like most book-to-movie adaptations are, so I'm super excited to read this. Also, Dollar Tree has started to get books in for a dollar, and some of them are actually decent sounding. So the first one I picked up was The Slap, by Christos Siokas? Siokas? I don't know how you pronounce that name. I know this was turned into a TV miniseries that I never watched, but I've heard this is a really fascinating book, I think, and I'm just, yeah, I'm excited to read it. And for a dollar, I mean, I couldn't say no to it. I also picked up Mind of Winter by Laura Kashishk. Gosh, these are all their names. This one sounds fascinating, and the plot of this sounds like a couple adopts a child from Siberia, and they're warned about her, but they still adopt her, and then the husband goes away on a trip or something, and the wife is left with the daughter, and creepy stuff starts happening. Sounds like it's right up my alley, and for a dollar, couldn't say no. And the last book I got at Dollar Tree for a dollar was 2 AM at the Cat's Pajamas by Marie Helene Bertino. I've actually heard really good things about this. It's a beautiful book. I also picked up Gemina because I love the first book in the Illuminae Files trilogy. And I know you can read this without having read Illuminae, but I'm really excited to read this. And the cool thing about these books are, are the fact that they're in like in emails and dossier files and chat rooms and stuff like that. It's just a really cool format. In the last few books I purchased from Book Outlet because Book Outlet is very dangerous for a book lover because their books are so freaking cheap. But the first one I got was Under the Skin by Michelle Faber and I heard the movie is really good. It's polarizing but good. But I wanted to read the book first and then watch the movie. I'm really excited to read this because I love me some science fiction and the weirder it is the more I love it. I also picked up Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King because this is being adapted into a TV show and I've heard good things about it so excited to read this because I have a newfound appreciation for Stephen King. I also picked up Hidden Bodies by Caroline Kepnes. This is the sequel to You which I really enjoyed. I've heard this is not as good but I still want to see what happens with the character from You. I can't really go into plot details but I just want to see how it is. It might be bad but you know I'm going to check it out anyway. Then I picked up this edition of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It's by obviously Lewis Carroll, but the illustrations are by Camille Rose Garcia. And look at this beauty. It's obviously an illustrated edition and I'm just really excited to read it because I've never actually read this classic novel, but I need to because I need to read more classics. But I just freaking adore the fact that it's illustrated and beautiful and yeah, I'm just a sucker for beautiful books, okay? And the last pickup in the last book is Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. This is a retelling of Jane Eyre where Jane is now a serial killer. Obviously, sad to read this. The book is absolutely stunning and it was a good prize, so I couldn't say no. So those are my geeky pickups for the month of August. Let me know down below what you've picked up this month. Also, I'm sorry if my lighting was wonky or anything. Again, getting used to the new office, trying to figure lighting stuff out that I really wanted to film in here. And if you liked the video, leave a like. Make sure to share the video if you liked it because that's my channel grow and it makes me super duper happy. Also, if you're not subscribed yet, but you like what you've seen and heard, hit the subscribe button. And make sure, if you want to see my videos all the time, Click the notification bell because if you don't click it, you might not be notified of my videos or live streams and that's super sad and it makes my heart cry and it just, it, it means the words to me if you click the notification bell to be alerted every time I upload a video or do a live stream or whatever. Also, if you'd like to follow me on social media sites, those are all listed in the description box down below. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Peace and kisses. Bye. What do you mean? 
Frank Randall is better than J.B. Fraser. You are out of your mind. I'm so sorry you had to hear that argument, guys. But to make up for that fact, my face will be floating over here in the near future. You can click that face and it'll send me to my channel if you aren't already. And if you'd like to see my previous upload, you'll find that up here. And a playlist of videos that you can watch over and over on repeat over here. And yeah, I need to go back to the invisible person I was talking to and debate why Jamie Fraser is better than Frank Randall.